Few are really born again, saved. If you search the polls, you will find there are at least twice as many people that confess they are not born again, ranging from about 60% plus. Many church organizations don't talk about the Holy Spirit. The salvation they teach is by doing the sacraments, starting with infant baptism. Others rely on the pastor leading them in a sinner's prayer, and then the pastor tells them they're saved. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the most important step in salvation. You need God to come live with you. This is the most important part of becoming a real believer. You must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Jesus told this to Nicodemus. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it lists, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Holy Spirit baptism is what changes a man's heart. He's changed from the inside. Titus 3.5 Not by works of righteousness which we have done according to his mercy. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. That being justified by his grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto man. This was prophesied in Ezekiel. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people and I will be your God. Jesus told his followers, If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth to whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not and neither know him but ye know him for he dwell with you and shall be in you i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you acts 5:32 the spirit is given to those who obey him his followers, his sheep, John 10, 27 to 28. For his sheep hear his voice and they follow him and he gives them eternal life. And those who continue in his word, John 8, 31. Many don't want to follow him. They don't want to serve God. They don't want to do his will for their lives. They don't want to practice righteousness. They don't want to repent but to stay in sin. And God understands this and won't force obedience on them. But he sends a servant out to invite them to the wedding banquet so they can be saved. You see, everyone has free will and responsibility to choose between life and death, heaven or hell. But if they are willing to turn from sin and live as an obedient child of God, if they want God, he'll be right there to receive you and give you his spirit. John 12 32. Jesus says, And I, if I be lifted up from earth, will draw all men unto me. 2 Peter 3 9. For he is long suffering and wants no one to perish but all to come to repentance. It's the Holy Spirit that confirms to someone they're a child of God. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. 
Now, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Romans 8.16 and Romans 8.9 To be a child of God, you have to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is lacking in most congregations. Few are born again. These people know it. They feel empty inside. They continue in a secular, sinful lifestyle. They attend church as a social club where they can encounter a watered-down, feel-good, happy gospel void of sin, repentance, and hell warnings. It's the reason why few study the tough verses in the Bible. Reading the tough verses about sin, judgment, and hell bothers their conscience. First, examine yourself and use the word as a mirror. Are you really in the faith or are you following another gospel? Do you really want salvation or do you want to go sinning? Examine your life and compare it to the way the Christian walk is supposed to be in John, 1 John, James, and the other epistles. Are you willing to repent? Second, if you are serious, God will meet you where you are. Pray and ask Him for the Spirit. Third, this is a supernatural experience. If you need more guidance, ask someone who really is born again about their experience and their changed life. The fruitless thing to do is ask somebody else to pray for you. You need to go and establish your relationship with God. Part 2 For seekers not yet born again, I'm going to try to describe the born-again experience. Again, the newborn believer knows he's born again. He and she, or she has had a supernatural experience and met God. There's no doubt in their mind. They have the Holy Spirit. God radically changed their heart and they have a testimony. They quickly come out of sin. Their lifestyle changes are noticeable to others. There is now joy, peace, love, and self-control in their lives. These are the fruits of the Spirit. If you have not had this experience, you are not yet a child of God. Ask a real-born believer what happened to them and when they got born again. Do not rely on anyone to tell you you're saved, because many are led in a quick sinner's prayer and told they're saved. And nothing happens. They continue to sin without conviction. And the newborn Christian again knows they're born again. They have a testimony of a specific time and date they started their walk. Started. Don't fall away. Okay, here are three testimonies of born again. I tried to get some common ones of relatively healthy people who are not critically ill like myself when I had an encounter with Jesus after my blood pressure was extremely high and out of control. You don't have to get critically ill to find God. You just have to be serious. I receive these testimonies back while witnessing to them. You will get testimonies back when you go out on the field and witness to others. You'll be surprised on how many testimonies you get back. I share these testimonies in order to get the seeker motivated to start their own research and ask others for testimonies. You Don't be shy, okay? Most of the time, the seeker needs to be convinced that Jesus is real. That's why doing some homework helps. Asking the, for testimonies help. And if you have a real friend telling you what happened to him, or her, your faith becomes unshakable. Hey, B shared her testimony of born again. She was a seeker for a long time. Then one day she was relaxing in a recliner and sensed a loving presence next to her, and she got born again. She radically changed so much that her husband didn't like the changes and he left. Even so, she was at peace in the midst of turmoil. B. S. S. got serious about seeking God after hearing a couple of hell testimonies. She desperately was seeking God because demons 
were scratching her at work. After her friend suggested serious prayer and repentance, something miraculous happened. She heard the audible voice of God telling her to go pray for a homeless person and give him food. She felt extremely happy and joyful, and the demons now leave her alone at work. She listens to worship music and is now trying to save her mom. Jay was a drug lord, trafficking drugs in and out of federal prison. He met the Holy Spirit at a prayer meeting and went back to cell. He started hating what he was doing. He, hated, he started hating the sin he was doing and he quit. He's delivered of demons and now he's still battling them in spiritual warfare. But his life changed so much he was released from prison early. C. C had been battling depression, diagnosed bipolar, and she prayed and met God. She no longer is bipolar and now is able to keep a steady job. Summary. Serious people who want God will find him. He'll come. Jesus will come and baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Do not be like Simon Magus. He had wrong motives. He sought to purchase the gift of God. Then when rebuked, asked others to pray for him. A person not serious about God will not get born again. And he'll just ask others to pray for them, just like Simon God knows when someone's serious because they are willing to come out of sin and walk like he walked, follow him and be led by the Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And if you're in a church that doesn't teach the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you just have empty religion.